You are welcome to this presentation. It's a continuation on the series that we started on defenses to criminal liability. Uh, we have uh, looked at various uh, specific defenses. And the last defense we looked at was the defense of insanity. And we'll, we'll conclude that bit on defense of insanity before looking at a couple of other uh, defenses. So we've looked at the defense of insanity. We've looked at uh, the meaning of insanity, insanity at the moment of trial, uh, the disability involved in insanity, and also uh, the loss of capacity uh, for which an offender will be rendered uh, not guilty by uh, reason of insanity if he successfully establishes the, 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 the ingredients of the plea of insanity. Today, we want to look at uh, a smaller defense, which also relates to insanity, uh, the issue of uh, non-insane delusion, non-insane delusion. So I'm going to share my slides in a minute so that you can follow. Non-insane delusion. Now, this defense is provided for in section 28. This defense is provided for in section 28 of the criminal code. Uh, the se specifically, the second paragraph of section 28 of the criminal code. We remember that section, the first part of section 28 deals with the defense of insanity where the offender claims that he was suffering from mental disease or natural mental infirmity as a result of which he has lost the capacity uh, to know that he ought not to do the act. He has lost the capacity to control his action, you know, um, uh, 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 and so on and so forth. Now, that is the first paragraph of section 28. The second paragraph relates to the uh, defense of delusion. Uh, if you look at the provision, it talks about delusion. Just a minute. I'm trying to, first of all, uh, I want to share the provisions of Section 28 of the Criminal Code, because I think it's important for us to carefully look at this provision so that we can understand the provision. Because I've noticed that there is some element of mischaracterization from some of the decided cases. And uh, some of them, and one of them in particular is a decision of the Supreme Court. So I feel that it's important uh, for me, for us to, you know, look at the provisions carefully. Again, the first paragraph deals with the defense of insanity. So that's clear. It's the second paragraph that provides for the defense of delusion. Now it says a person whose mind at the time of doing or meeting to do an act is affected by delusions on some specific matters or matters, but who is not otherwise entitled to the benefit of the foregoing provision. The foregoing provision you know, relates to the first paragraph of this section is criminally responsible for the act of omission to the same extent as if the real state of things had been such as it would have been, as it was induced by the delusion to believe to exist. So this provision allows for what is called the defense of delusion. A defendant is laboring under some misapprehension. For instance, if a person apprehends there was a knock on his door and his friend comes in through the door. And somehow, because he's suffering from, from some mental or some psychological state, he perceives that it was not his friend that walked into the door, but a lion walking through the door, moving towards him to attack him. That is delusion. Delusion is a belief that is not supported by reality. Of course, yeah, the reality is that it is not an iron that a lion that came through the door seeking to come and attack him. 
It is his friend that opened the door and entered the room. But somehow, he, he believed, though unreal, that it's a lion that has walked through the door and the lion was about to attack him. Now, let's assume for a moment that that is, that is his true belief, which could arise from several factors. Now, if he now, because he believes that a lion was about to attack him, brings out the gun and shoots at the lion, the law will allow him a defense if the real state of things had been such as it was induced by the delusion to believe to exist. So as he believed that a lion was trying to attack him, if a lion was trying to attack him, then he will be entitled to use a, 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 a gun to protect himself. Okay? And, and you will agree with me that, you know, under the principles of uh, uh, self-defense and self-preservation, he will have been entitled to, to protect himself. Now, that is what this provision is designed to govern. But the problem with this provision is that a person who is deluded on some specific matter or matters, that person is likely to be suffering from some form of, you know, mental incapacity, some, some sort of, uh, 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 yes, mental incapacity, because, I mean, how can a normal human being suddenly imagine a normally sane human being functioning with, with full mental capacity suddenly imagine out of the blues that the lion is entering into the door about to attack him. Okay? So, the problem with the provision is that a person who is deluded on some specific matter or matters, in most cases, the person is likely to be suffering from some form of mental disease which makes him to be deluded as to those state of fact. Now, the provision of second, uh, the second paragraph that I read out earlier says that for a person to be entitled to the defense of delusion, the person must not be entitled to, to the benefit of the foregoing provision of this section. In other words, the person must not be entitled to, to the provision relating to the defense of insanity. So if the delusion is produced by a state of mental disease, or natural mental infirmity, which is the typical disability that we see in pleas of insanity. Then the, the matter, <coughs> excuse me, the matter will be governed by the rules relating to insanity and not by the second paragraph of section 28 that relates to delusion. So it is this overlap between these two provisions that has created some of the problems that you may find in some of the authorities not clearly making a distinction between the two. If the delusion is caused by mental disease or natural mental infirmity, then that defendant is entitled to the defense of insanity under the first paragraph of section 28. But if the delusion is, is not an insane delusion, if it is a non-insane delusion, then the defendant can come under the second paragraph. So you will find in some of the authorities a mischaracterization of what uh, uh, sec uh, the second part of the second of, of uh, the second paragraph of section 28 is designed to deal with. The second part of section 28 deals with non-insane delusion. In other words, delusion that is not caused by mental disease or natural mental infirmity. If it is an issue of insane delusion, a delusion that is caused by mental disease or natural mental infirmity, then the provisions of section, uh, of the first paragraph of section 28 of the criminal code will apply. So I, I wanted to set out this provision so that we can see it clearly, so that as we go through some of the cases, we'll be able to see uh, where the court uh, mischaracterized 
what constitutes delusion under the So I, I want to return to my slide. So I, I, I've tried to explain the first uh, few uh, points under the uh, the non-insane delusion. The second paragraph of the 28 of the criminal code provides for non-insane delusion. I've already said that. The provision does not apply if the condition of the defendant comes within insanity, divine, defined under the first paragraph of section 28. That is, if the delusion causes mental disease or natural a mental infirmity, then it's the case of insane delusion. And the first paragraph of section 28 uh, of the criminal code applies. The courts in Nigeria have not always clearly noted the distinction between the first and the uh, second paragraphs of section 28. In Udofia versus the state, Obaseki JSC, with due respect to the learned law, wrongly referred to the provision of the second paragraph of section 28 as insane delusion. The second paragraph of section 28 does not deal with insane delusion. The, the proper way to characterize it is that it deals with non-insane delusion. It is the first paragraph of section 28 that covers cases of delusion where those delusion is a product of a state of mental disease or natural mental infirmity. So the provision of, of the second paragraph of section 28 is wrongly characterized as insane delusion. Insane delusion is covered by the first paragraph of section 28. The second paragraph of section 28 will apply to a person who is not insane within the meaning of the first paragraph, but who is deluded as to certain facts. Okay, now, this is part of the problem with the provision, really, because, I mean, a person who is not insane, a person who is not suffering from mental disease or natural mental infirmity, how will the person be deluded by certain facts or specific facts? How would that person suffer from delusion as to certain facts or as to specific facts? Now, but in any case, the law says if your delusion is a non-insane delusion and can properly be uh, you know, domiciled within the provisions of the second part of section 28 of the criminal code, then it is a case of non-insane delusion. Okay? So if it is a case of non-insane delusion, how do we determine whether the claimant is entitled to rely on that uh, 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 plea? In determining his liability, the law takes the fact as he assumes them to be and then asks the question, what his liability will be if the facts were as he believed them to be? Like I said earlier, somebody who suddenly imagines and he becomes deluded by the fact that his friend that opened the door and entered the room is a lion and he kills the lion in order to protect himself. What would the liability of that person be ordinarily? Well, the law will say that if his liability for killing a lion trying to kill him, trying to kill him, is that he has no liability. He will not be liable for killing the lion. If the lion was suddenly to, you know, to enter his room and he fears that the lion is about to kill him. So that is how that uh, will apply. In our um, Groomer, uh, uh, you, you can see uh, the earlier case of Gobadia versus the state, 2004-17 WRN, uh, page 56 at page 68. Inara and Groomer, uh, that's a West African uh, Court of Appeal uh, decision, defined delusion as a symptoms of mental disturbance and a false belief which is unshakable by fact. In fact, that is what a delusion is. It's a symptom of it's a symptom of mental disturbance. And if it is if it is a symptom of mental disturbance, then it is likely to be a case of mental disease or natural mental infirmity, which will bring it, it within the provision of the first paragraph of section twenty eight. You know, so I mean, it, it, it's it's really very difficult 
to see how uh, uh, a defendant will be able to bring himself within this kind of provision. Because it, 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 the court is likely to see it as, you know, the defendant trying to make up an incredible st story that nobody will be, you know, that nobody will believe. Somebody who is going on a farm, you know, uh, 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 with his wife, and then suddenly he attacks the wife and kills the wife. And he says that, uh, well, I didn't kill, I didn't intend to kill my wife. I felt that it was a deer or a lion that suddenly attacked me. And I attacked the lion back in return, only to realize that it was my wife that I was attacking. I mean, there's no court that would believe such an incredible story. You know, the court is likely to dis disbelieve such an incredible an incredible story because even before the court applies the rule as to liability, which will be as uh on the facts as the defendant believes them to be, the court must first of all believe the testimony. The court must first of all believe the testimony. If the court disbelieves this testimony, if the court says no, I find that this testimony is not true, it's incredible, and so I uh, the testimony is not believed, then the testimony cannot constitute a basis for the plea of uh, non-insane delusion. In the one and the state, 1964-1 All Nigerian Law Report, the defendant killed the deceased who are threatening earlier to kill him at night by evil spirits. So if somebody is threatening to kill you in the night, is, is threatening to kill you in the night with evil spirits. Now, how does that provide a defense for delusion? Okay, if he's coming to kill you in the night by evil spirit, what would that entitle you to do? The threat to kill by evil spirit, I mean, does not entitle you to kill the person physically. If you can also kill him by evil spirit, so be it. So the court held that the defense of delusion under the second paragraph of section 28 failed because, assuming the facts as he believed, he was not acting in self-defense under section 286 of the criminal code when he killed it. So he, he couldn't have been acting in self-defense because there was no uh, imminent apprehension of, of death or grievous bodily harm to his person, which would justify him to use proportionate force in self-defense. If somebody threatened to kill you at night by evil spirit, that does not justify, on the facts, that does not justify you, even if we agree that he is, he is threatening to kill you by evil spirit. That does not entitle you to use uh, force in, 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 in self-defense to kill him in return. So the defense, the provision on delusion, particularly the provision on non-insane delusion in the second paragraph of the criminal code is really indeed very problematic. Because uh, the provision in a way is similar to the defense of mistake of fact under section 25 which says if you make uh, a honest mistake of fact as to a particular state of things, the court will take those facts as you believe them to be, and your liability will then be decided based on your belief as you had believed them to be. So if, for instance, you took property belonging to another, believing that it's your own, that's a mistake of fact. So the court will treat it that, well, if the property had been yours, would you have uh, been liable for stealing it? The answer is no. So why would the, the law be subjecting somebody who had an unreasonable belief? Because the, the, the belief is unreasonable. Who had an unreasonable belief, which the court has said is a symptom of mental disturbance. And the law is now saying that he will be judged based on the facts as he believed them to be. So somebody who believed in, in something that is unreal, the law is now saying it will be judged based on the real facts. That's a, 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 a bundle of contradiction. You know, so the, the provision of uh, the second paragraph of, of the criminal code does not really add anything new to the law. Rather, it, it only adds confusion. It only adds confusion to the provisions of the law. Uh, and the provision is really not needed. 
the provision of the first paragraph is wide enough to cover insane delusion. Like we have said, I, I mean, I, I mean, like the court said, uh, delusion is a symptom of mental disturbance. And if there is a symptom of mental disturbance, which has caused a state of mental disease or natural mental infirmity, then judge the offender according to the rules of uh, insanity in the first paragraph of section 28. So because of this, because of the criticisms that have been raised against the provision on on non-insane non -insane delusion, the provision of the second paragraph of section 28 of the criminal code has been deleted from the equivalent provision in section 27 of the criminal of Lagos State 2011. And it has also been removed from the provision of section 33 of the criminal law of Edo State, uh, 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 you know, uh, in, in similar vein. So we can see from here that that provision does not serve any useful purpose. Uh, in fact, it's a provision that is likely to create confusion uh, into the law. Any, anybody who claims to be suffering from delusion, which is the symptoms of mental disease, uh, the court should then consider whether that is sufficient to constitute a state of mental disease or a state of natural mental infirmity. And if it does, then the court should then go ahead to consider uh, whether the loss of capacities as defined in the provisions of section 28 of the criminal code has occurred or uh, uh, the loss of capacities in relation to uh, unsoundness of mind under section 51 of the penal code as, as occurred. Fortunately, there's no similar provision of delusion uh, in the provisions uh, of the penal code. So that is going to be the end of this short presentation on uh, the defense of delusion uh, under the second paragraph of the provisions of section 28 of the criminal code. Thank you very much. Please uh, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Criminal Law Teacher, so that as we post uh, additional, uh, as we upload additional resources, you'll be able to gain access to it. And then you can carefully listen uh, to the presentation. And then you can come to class prepared with your questions. And if there is any aspect of the presentation you require for that clarification, I'll, I'll be ready to provide further clarification. Thank you very much and God bless you.